In Noyabrsk district of Russia, two schoolchildren burned a helicopter. They were promised 5 million rubles for this. According to Baza, on the night of September 11th, two boys aged 13 and 14 made their way onto the helipad at the Noyabrsk airport, after which they poured flammable liquid on the Mi-8 helicopter parked there and set it on fire. The boys fled the scene of the crime, but they were detained less than an hour later. The fact is that the schoolchildren set the helicopter on fire with cigarettes. After they poured the liquid on the helicopter, the boys decided to smoke and then threw a cigarette into the helicopter. There was no fire. Then one of the boys lit a second cigarette and then stuck it into the liquid. At that moment, an explosion occurred. As a result, the boys' faces were badly burned, so after running a little away from the airport, the schoolchildren had to call an ambulance. Medics took the arsonists to the hospital. The helicopter burned almost completely, only its tail remained. During a conversation with law enforcement officers, the schoolchildren said that they were promised 5 million rubles for their work. The boys also admitted that several days ago they set fire to a cell phone tower. For this, they received 30,000 rubles. More than a dozen school districts shut down Monday across a wide swath of southeastern Kentucky as a grueling search stretched into a third day for a gunman who opened fire on an interstate highway and wounded five people over the weekend. Trooper Scotty Pennington from the Kentucky State Police said this manhunt has become a methodical effort, similar to hide and seek. Searchers have been combing the rugged, hilly area since Saturday evening when a gunman began shooting at drivers on Interstate 75 near London, a small city of about 8,000 people about 75 miles south of Lexington. Joseph A. Couch, 32, was named a suspect in the shooting after authorities recovered his SUV on a service road near the crime scene. They later found a semi-automatic weapon nearby that they believe was used in the shooting, said Deputy Gilbert Achiardo, a spokesperson for the sheriff's office. Authorities vowed to keep up a relentless pursuit of the gunman in the densely wooded area as local residents worried about where the shooter might turn up next. Administrators in Rockcastle County, just north of where the shooting took place, closed for the day, as did Knox County to the south. Classes also were cancelled at three regional college campuses. This is a tragedy that has happened in the edge of Law County and Rockcastle County, and hopefully we can get some resolution to this quickly and in a timely manner. I know the citizens of our community in both Rockcastle and Law Counties are, are, are stressed to the max, and, and law enforcement is working tirelessly to bring this to uh, a calm and an ease for them. Um, this manhunt has become a, a methodical effort, uh, similar like a hide and seek. We're focused on protecting the residents and their homes and the businesses during this critical time. Our goal is to apply steady pressure and wearing Mr. Couch down. Uh, the longer he is in the woods, you know, late, last night it got pretty chilly and today it's got kind of humid and hot. Uh, hopefully he has no water and nothing to eat and just time that we will wear him down and putting pressure on him with constant steady uh, air, air, air helicopters flying over, drones flying over, uh, dogs, SRT in, in, the, uh, in the woods looking, um, cars running up down the interstate. Just things like that is putting pressure on him and, and hopefully he's, he'll eventually just walk out of the woods and give himself up. This is a constant communication effort so people you know, ask why aren't we just going in there? You know, if you've followed my Facebook in the last hour or so, we have gave you a photograph of the area. It's not like going over to this business and looking for somebody in there. It's not like going to a football field and trying to find somebody behind the bleachers. We are in the Daniel Bune National Forest. And this is thousands and thousands of acres 
And I stated last night, it's kind of like a jungle. Well, it is like a jungle. And we have cliff beds. We have sinkholes. We have caves. We have culverts that go under the interstate. We have reek, uh, creeks and rivers uh, and the dense brush. I mean, it's not something I can just take my dog for a natural walk through. Yes, there are paths, but when we're looking for somebody, we have to go through those dense areas. We have to, we have to go and make sure no rock is unturned to find not just him, but find evidence. He was in the military, but it was not the Army uh, National Guard. It was the Army Reserves. So um, he, he's been discharged with an Arnold discharge. Um, so I wanted to clarify that. And you got to think it's hunting season. People are still out there hunting. So we encourage people in the community, if you're going to be hunting, please don't be out at Cromer's Ridge in Livingston area. Please stay away from that area for a couple of days until we come to resolve. And, and, and people out in the community don't don't have somebody that, I'm going to save the world. I'm going to just go out and go find him myself. Because not only could, could uh, you get harmed, you, you could get killed. And, and we don't want that to happen. And so as of this time, we have not, the evidence has not come that we have located him but it's very slow. It's a very slow process.